about the Vanderpump Rules after show, why Lala just can't shut up about Ariana, and we might get into a little bit of uh, Diddy updates. So grab your beverage, uh, sit back, relax, and let's get started. If you like what you see, come and get it with me. I know you deserve all you want. Cause your heart's made of gold. Hello, everyone. Happy Thursday. Welcome to No Offense, All Offense with me, stand-up comedian and pop culture vulture, Jolene Lunzer. We talk all about the trending news stories, our favorite reality shows. We take a comedic look. We take a very opinionated look. And I always remind you that um, we try to find the funny. Sometimes we can't. And we're talking about pretty serious stuff. But we usually, we do pretty good over here, you guys. Uh, and uh, I am very opinionated. But uh, you can have different opinions than me and sound off in the comment section or the live chat and we can agree to disagree. So you don't have to agree with everything I say to enjoy the show. That's my opinion! That's my opinion and you can have your opinion too. Hello everyone joining us in the live chat. Uh, you beautiful little pumpkin spice babies. So good to see you. So many things to talk about. I have to keep this to an hour, so I got to try to keep it tight. But first things first, let's get the housekeeping out of the way. Smash the like if you haven't already. Let's set a like goal for 400. I don't know. I feel like that's very doable. You guys have been killing it with the likes. Please subscribe if you haven't already. We have gained quite a few new subscribers over the uh, past couple days. So thank you and welcome. And we're on our way to 40K. So that's amazing. If you want to support the channel further than liking or subscribing, you can always send a super chat while we're live. I'll highlight your comment. We can talk about it. Um, I don't get to get to all the comments. So uh, super chat, if you definitely want me to see something, is the best way, uh, but not necessary. Uh, you can also send a super thanks if you're watching later. Hello, Replay Crew. And uh, that's appreciated. You can hit me up on the Venmo, PayPal, Cash App. Everything is at the bottom of the screen and in the description, as well as a link to my YouTube membership and my Patreon. All right. But just you being here and participating in the live chat is amazing. And Joanne, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Joanne Hendricks, thank you for becoming a YouTube member and joining the Lean Team. I appreciate you. Uh, and welcome. 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 All right. You guys uh, also shout out to Kathy who uh, yesterday I talked about it but in case she's watching now who got me a wonderful gift off my Amazon wish list um, organization uh, that I love so organization under the sink an organization in my drawers which sounds dirtier than I meant it to sound um, but you guys know what I mean okay so we have so much to talk about last night if you missed it yesterday I did my um ugh, Tom Sandoval's voice. Um, transferring something over to my computer. Yesterday, I did my roast and recap of Vanderpump Rules latest episode. If you missed it, please go check it out. Leave your comments. I want to know what you guys think. We really got into it as we do. And uh, we found some funny parts. We found some serious parts. Um, we found all of the parts. Okay. Yay. Chatty Kathy's here. I was hoping to see you. Thank you so much, Kathy. I appreciate that. That was so thoughtful of you. And, uh, I asked my husband, I like geek out over this stuff. So, um, any kind of container store type thing, I'm <laughs> so happy. So thank you. And the thoughtful note as well, uh, that was sent, um, with the Amazon, uh, uh package. Uh, thank you so much. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going out for Hype Man Husband Chell's uh, birthday dinner today. Even though his birthday was Tuesday, he had midterms. So tonight we're going out with friends. So I do have to keep this to an hour, but yet I keep I keep talking. Okay, so uh, let's talk about some things. Let's let's get some, some things rolling. If we miss anything and aren't able to talk about everything, I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back tomorrow. We're probably going to do the Valley recap tomorrow as well. So uh, let's first things first, let's get started. You guys are asking me in the chat, have I seen Lala on Juicy Scoop? I've seen parts and we're going to talk about the part I saw. And on TikTok yesterday, I had to do a little video because I'm just like, this chick will not shut up about Ariana. Lala is on a press tour talking about Ariana. Uh, Lala is pressed and she's on tour talking about Ariana while Ariana is just making money moves. She's like, mm, I don't talk shit. I make money moves. If I see you and I don't speak, that means I don't fuck with you. Uh, Lala cannot stop talking, whether it's the talk, her own podcast, 
Heather McDonald's podcast, Juicy Scoop. Uh, e! News, she will not shut up. She has went as far recently as to say that Ariana now has the biggest ego on the show, more than Tom Sandoval. This is where you lose me. You lose me, Lala. You lost me. I'm gone. I am now gone. You got to win me back, Lala. Um, I doubt you care, but I, if you know me, uh, well, I mean, she doesn't, but you guys know I cheer for the women. I want to cheer for the women. Love the women. Okay. But you lost me. You lost me, Lala. I think you lost a lot of people and I think you don't get it. Lala thinks she is like the voice of reason on the show. She thinks she literally said on Heather McDonald's podcast that she believes that she is asking the questions. We, the viewers, you, me, everybody in between want to hear when it comes to Ariana's situation. And doubting her trauma. I'm sorry. Please put it in the chat. Put it in the chat if any of the questions you've heard Lala talk about, ask, are anything you needed to know. You had one mission, one thing to do this season, and that was to support Ariana, tell us your story about your life, and keep exposing the Toms. That's all we wanted. That's all we wanted. The Toms were finally getting exposed for the trash bags they are and for uh, the wonderful edits that they were getting all these years that they took for granted with their privileged asses. That's all we wanted was for you to continue that. And we wanted a big girl parade of like woman power. We did this shit. You know, instead we got whatever the fuck you're doing, which is horrible and doesn't make any sense other than thirsty production driven in order to keep some kind of spot on the show. Jealousy. Hey, jealousy, the gin blossoms. Um, other than that, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know anyone, but if you are someone, um, in the chat who is like, yeah, I like what Lala's doing. Please sound off. We won't pick on you. I promise. Okay. You can have your opinion about it. Um, but I don't see a lot of people. Maybe they just don't come to my channel, uh, who are like, yes, Lala, thank you for doubting Ariana's trauma and, uh, you know, placating the Toms, especially Tom Sandoval. We really need another male sympathizer, problematic man sympathizer uh, on this cast. That's really what that's really what we need. Cheryl's coming in hot. Cheryl says, yes, Lala is not the voice of reason. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. Epic Turtle says they really wanted Ariana to stay on a, in a puddle of tears on the floor. I think there was nothing. I talked about this on Ryan's podcast. And Shout out to Ryan Bailey. Uh, I talked about this there, but I really don't think there was anything Ariana could do to win this season. I think no matter what, it was going to literally be um, a hit piece, a hit season on Ariana. I think that this push from whoever Vanderpump production for this, for the Toms, mainly Tom Sandoval to be completely absolved and forgiven and welcome back in the group with, without even having, you know, any real remorse or believing he did anything wrong. Uh, instead he believes he's the, he's the victim, you know, uh, this is, has been just the, the just worst case scenario for this show. It, it's just, it, it's been horrible, you know, and, and I think they knew that they were going to do this to, to Ariana and that this was going to be uh, the way they were going to set it up and the way that they were going to edit this and uh, stage it and all of the above. And I don't know who in the misogynist men thought this was a great idea or the internalized misogyny women who work on the show thought this was a good idea, but let me tell you, it's not. Okay. So let's review some of this after show and I have clips here and we're going to play it. We're going to talk about it. And... Okay, here we go. Got it. Got it. Let me share my screen and let's get started roasting the shit out of this because this after show VPR after show, you can go to Bravo TV, um, YouTube and, and watch this. The after shows have become almost more interesting than the damn show because, uh, we're hearing more. Um, yes, Susan Z. Exactly. Ariana was damned if she did damned if she didn't, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Okay. It didn't matter. Thank you. Anne. Oh, is that, Anne? is that the Anne? Uh, <laughs> that would be amazing. Okay. Uh, let me put my AirPod in so we don't get any feedback. You guys let me know if you 
cannot hear it. So let me share it one more time. Make sure I have the audio tab shared. All right. And if you can't hear it, please let me know in the chat. But let's take a listen. This is one of the clips. And uh, here we go. Things between Sandoval and Ariana come to a tipping point. I've never seen that side of Ariana before. The police would not get cold. Never f***ing look at me in the eye again, you f***ing piece of shit. Don't look at me in the eye. See, they were fighting. You've already got everything, yeah, Ariana. You've already me. got everything. you got all you the campaigns. Got, now you're going to take my assistant. Oh, my God, dude. Dude, this is... That would have been too much. Her level of fury and, and rage, it was f***ing intense. I saw, like, in her eyes, like, a fiery disdain for you. You want to come back at me about the litter box? You almost killed my f***ing dog. You knock on my room. It was a total The whole accident. thing was an accident. Of course it was an accident. That's why I'm saying, be upset, be angry, but... I just, this is reminiscent of the pasta moment. What about the pasta? I don't think it's really about Maya or the dog. She's got some f***ing anger too because of how Tom was sort of cheating on her when Charlotte was gone. I mean, look, it goes oh so God, deep, dude. This. Well, I mean, you guys also filmed like not f far after. Like now it's been a little bit more time, mm -hmm. but I mean, she was still reeling from everything at that moment. That makes me feel sad for her because that feeling of like hatred and stuff is just so much and it almost does more damage to yourself than to like try to let things go. You can just tell that rotten hell. Remember that, Brittany? Remember that, Brittany? Brittany, I'm going to need you to sit this one out unless you're going to be, I understand it wasn't so bad what you said right now. It wasn't horrible, but we're going to see little smirks from Brittany. We're going to see her laughing at Lala's petty little jealous jokes, and we're going to need you to sit this one out. All right. Uh, unless you are going to be all team girl, like they supported you when they had like all the girls come together when you were like, rotten hell, did you have sex with her? Rotten hell. Okay. Unless you are going to come together like the witches of WeHo did, like Ariana did, and was there was like, Tom, you're being so obtuse. Unless you're going to obtuse it, you're going to have to be quiet. You're going to have to be quiet. You push your tots down, deal with your own marriage, okay? You got your own problematic husband that is still on television that is reeking of being the same person he once was. Evelyn, thank you so much for the first super chat of the live. Evelyn says, do you think Lala could be running with this story to keep things going so it stays on the air? She'll say that. She'll say that's what she's doing. People who uh, are Lala apologists will say that. Without her, we wouldn't have a show. We would. We would. We really would. We. This is not what anyone wanted. Who wouldn't have wanted to watch the women take down the two Toms? You don't have a season of like, screw you, bros, especially Sandoval after all of that. Remember, this is just months after Sandoval, uh, Scandoval came out and also the, the reunion. So oh, how is she making it entertaining by taking up for the same dude she's claimed to dislike for years? For the same dude she's going podcast to podcast calling Tom Sandoval a misogynist, but yet out of the other side of her mouth being like, Ariana's just doing too much. She needs to clean up her food next to her bed. Okay. Doesn't she have a glad trash bag endorsement? Doesn't she? Mm, That's not what we want to see. We loved it last season when she just unleashed. Sure. It was a little projection. Of course. Her situation with, with Randall. We understand she can't. We didn't ask her to do that. And we don't expect her to be Lauren from Utah this way on Tom all season, but we expect a little consistency. We expect a little girl power. We expect, I mean, that's what people want to see. No, I guarantee there are nobody. And please correct me if I'm wrong. If there's someone who's like, I like this. I like that they're taking down the victim of Tom's crimes. <laughs> okay. But nobody was like, you know what? I went through all that with Scandival. I hope everyone feels bad for Tom and takes down Ariana. Yeah. I hope they're all jealous of her and the things she's getting and tell her to just get over it. That's what I hope. I can't wait for that. Um, so she might think that Evelyn, and that's a great question, by the way. Uh, but, and people who love her might think that, but she ain't doing nothing but bringing the show down into the ground. Boom, 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 boom. Lala's digging a hole for the show. Hurrah, hurrah. Uh, Linda P, thank you so much for the super sticker, Linda. Okay. So, so, you know, Brittany's like, well, I just like that. We're going to hurt her. Okay, beer cheese. Please calm it down a little bit. Oh, but like, she's very, she's on a hundred still. There's been no, like, come down from the anger. It's not my place to tell her when or when she shouldn't be healed by or when she should or shouldn't. It is hilarious to me. I just, I'm baffled by Lala Kent, Miss on 124 Sevs, uh, is the one calling people out and saying she's on a hundred. She's angry. Again normalize being angry and processing your grief and going through all the stages of grief like a normal healthy person normalize disliking and having anger for people who hurt you 
so that you can move through. You don't push that shit down because it'll manifest in other ways. Be angry. Let that anger out, especially with someone that you considered your family, your life partner, someone you were in what you thought a monogamous relationship with other than the occasional, you know, uh, Tom gets to watch while the girls do stuff. That was their agreement. They already had. Okay. But it never had an agreement for him to go have a relationship with her friend for seven months to a year or more. So normalize women feeling their feelings, going through the grieving process and feeling angry if they need to feel angry. And that's okay. And that's okay. Because the more, like I said, you push that shit down and people say, just get over it. That's not how it works. That is not how it works, people. And we know that. And we know that. And the people saying that are just ridiculous. Uh, David, thank you so much for the super chat. David says, are you going to watch Big Brother 26 this year? Big Brother should be a million dollar show. Yes, I am going to watch Big Brother uh, season 26 uh, this season. Mm -hmm. I definitely am. And right now I think it's a $750,000 show. But yeah, million dollar. Why not? You know, have it match up to Survivor. I can't wait for BB26 and it'll be here before we know it. All right. Let's keep listening to Lala, who I don't know. Are you over it with Rand? Did you work through that? Because it's been years, years and you hate him. Maybe you maybe you should give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe for your own self to feel good, you should like open yourself up to conversations with him. Maybe. Mm hmm shouldn't be over it but like i i think it was a little worrisome to know that it's that close to the surface you guys hear that shoot 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 i shouldn't have taken my ear pod out uh but sometimes when i have my ear pod in uh sometimes it feels like i can't hear like i'm underwater okay when i'm talking all right come down from the anger it's not my place to tell her when or when she should you i don't think it's let me let's redo this here we go we got this. We got this, you guys. All right. Let's try this one more time. We're going to present and share the screen. And we are going to see if we can hear now. We got our volume up. All right. Why are they allowed to speak? <laughs> Kara, exactly. Exactly, Kara. Much, and it almost does more damage to yourself than to like try to let things go. You can just tell that like she's very. She's on a hundred still. There's been no the like chat. come down from the anger. Uh, it's not my place to tell her when or when she shouldn't be healed by it or when she should or shouldn't be over it. Mm -mm. But like, I, I think it was a little worrisome to know that it's that. We'll try this again. On. Close to the surface. It hurt me to see that she was still hurting so much and is still so angry. All right, I think I'm just going to have to do it this way. Apologies, you guys can hear it, but my AirPods like, you can't hear this, chick. Far after, like now it's been a little bit more time, mm -hmm. but I mean, she was still reeling from everything at that moment. That makes me feel sad for her because that feeling of like hatred and stuff is just so much and it almost does more damage to yourself than to like try to let things go. You can just tell that like she's very, she's on a hundred still. There's been no like come down from the anger. It's not my place to tell her when or when she shouldn't be healed by it or when she should or shouldn't be over it. Right. But like, I, I think it was a little worrisome to know that it's that close to the surface. It hurt me to see that she was still hurting so much and is still so angry. And that's a reason why I do try to figure out a road to forgiveness in whatever way is because I don't like feeling that rage inside of me. But he wasn't doing anything to help take that anger and rage away from her. You know, he's doubling down. He's making excuses. He's weaponizing her mental health. He let the dog in. It wasn't paying attention. There's so many things. So I get where even if she had already had months of therapy and work to get past the affair, then this happens. All that shit's out the window because he has now done something new to hurt her and their animal, you know, in the crossfires. So I very much empathize with what Sheena's saying right now and agree with her. But when you're in Ariana's position and you have that, if we go back to old season of Vanderpump with Bo's mom, like the reptilian tunnel vision. <laughs> reptilian brain. It's like alien versus predator because there is no potential for compromise. <laughs> I'll never forget. It is so hard to see outside of that. Yeah. But I agree with Sheena. It's like whatever someone can do to stop feeling the anger because the anger is really only eating away at you. It's hurting her more it's than anyone. Her. And it's then that hurts the people around her who just want right. her to, you know, just be the star that she is and shine as bright as she right. can, which she is. 
but of knowing course. she's still hurt but inside, those, it's like I want right. all of that to go away. I just want it to all because be the anger will eat away at the person who is holding. Yeah. Okay, here's what's happening is you want that because that's how you would deal with it. That's what you do is you push things under the rug. So basically they want Ariana to shut up and get over it because of their own personal feelings. You don't truly then want your friend to process these feelings and feel better and be able to go through the grieving process of this relationship. You're just like, mm, gosh, it's like, oh, hurry up. This is like, it's uncomfortable to see you're that angry. Mm, mm. Well, maybe then you should uh, speak to Tom Sandoval. Maybe then that should make you support her even more on her journey to be healthy and rid of this alleged what appears to be just narcissistic POS, you know, instead of just because it makes you uncomfortable, that doesn't mean it's not correct for her process. This is what she needs to do for her. Okay. It makes you uncomfortable. That's your own shit. You got to go talk to your own therapist about that. But I hate that you you'll see that from a lot of people because it makes them uncomfortable because emotions are uncomfortable for a lot of people. And I understand that. But you can't project your uncomfortable uh, ability onto other people and especially women. You know, uh, Sheena uh, should know better than anyone as a fellow woman that, you know, the the standards a little different for us, you know, and anytime we, you know, allude to an emotion or we're going to, you know, we're hysterical or we're angry or things like that. So, I mean, you should really be encouraging your friend to like, yeah, feel these feelings. Fuck him. He did do you dirty. He's nasty. You showing up here in a sweater vest. Ugh, ugh. Look at them nails. Oh, gross. Let's shave his head. Just kidding. We're not going to do anything physical, but if I could, I would. That's what you should be doing. Not worrying about your friendship with him. None of this shit. Who cares? I don't care if you're on the same television show together. There are many people on television shows together who don't really like each other. Okay. And after everything that he's done and after everything he continues to do, we don't, we don't care if you don't like him because we don't like him. Most, I would say the majority of the audience doesn't like this man. They don't like this man. So Kristen seems to get it. Maybe because she dated him. Uh, but Sheena's still like, mm, I'm uncomfy. I'm a little uncomfortable about this. Oh, well, that's your problem, Sheena. And I like you, girl. But that's your issue, not Ariana. Uh, and I, I hated seeing that. It was really hard in that moment. Like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what? Is, you didn't butthurt about me being mad about that? Like... Okay, you can check. There was a bit of. <laughs> That's what I love about Katie. I don't care. I know people hate Katie. I I refuse. I refuse. She goes. You can choke. <laughs> exactly. Who cares? I love how Ariana and Katie are handling this, and they're just like, oh, that 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 bothers you. My pain. Is, makes you feel uncomfortable. I'm so sorry that my pain and things that happen to me is hurtful to you. Oh, Bummer City Township. I love that she's like, you can choke. <laughs> well, you, you can choke on those words. We have a fight at Beach Day. Didn't that happen last year on Banner Pump Rules too? Don't <laughs> so make another f***ing <laughs> joke. And it's your life. You're a two white house wife. Loser. Just it's a sure. reoccurring theme. I'm probably an antagonist, but after having that response at his house, uh, I felt like this group still needed to be forced into having some kind of conversations with Tom. Almost every guy in this group has been flirty with me at some point. You included. It's more of like recipient of flirtiness. Is that what you told her about when you guys started that whole thing? Can you have this conversation not in front of me because it's f***ing disgusting. Let's, let's do that. But clearly we can't have those conversations yet. He is never going to f***ing be sorry, remorseful, or one f***ing iota of any of that. And you guys keep shoving him down my f***ing throat. And what do you think I'm going to do? Say you're going to have the best f***ing beach day ever? Not my finest hours sometimes, but I think uh, that's just who I am. Like I'd rather have an un uncomfortable conversation than not have a conversation about it and sit there like, you know, I just sit there like this. You guys are both great dog and cat parents. Well, I'm a dog and cat parent. I paid the adoption fee, so I bought her. It was the one bill that Ariana paid. Tom doesn't want Kitty Allmeyer. Let's be real. He's probably just yeah. like being argumentative and being an asshole. This is a petty, this is a petty conversation. They're Ariana's pets the though. They're Ariana's pets. You can kind of tell, right? It's not rocket science. Like you can kind of tell in most cases, like which one belongs with who. Kitty, I, I understand because she had Kitty since she was a kitten. She found her in New Jersey in a parking lot. It did really take care of Kitty a lot though. He would love for everyone in the world to think that I'm the big bad wolf. And he's just like, 
poor little Red Riding Hood had to put up with her for so long. Like, I don't do sh I just, you know, in the nine months since we broke up, managed to write a book, be, <laughs> be third place on Dancing with the Stars, get my ass on Broadway. You know, like, yeah, I don't do sh Just did all that. What'd you do today? Get your nails done? He would love for me to be run away out of this group and out of the Gosh, Katie is the friend you need in this situation. Katie with the little, what, what do you do? Get his nails done? That's exactly, she wrote a book. She's on Broadway. She became the host of Love Island, um, amongst other things that Ariana has done. So Tom being in this last episode, saying how lazy she is and then, and then him saying it on podcasts and things. It's like, miss me, bro. And I love that this is what a girlfriend does. This is what we all hope that our friends would do if we are in a situation like this, especially our girlfriends. To be like, what do you do? Get his nails done? High five, girl. Yeah. <laughs> what a bitch. Uh, uh, you know, that is what you need. We don't need, I'm going to be devil's advocate. Okay, well, then I'm going to be devil's advocate for Pickleball Randall. Okay. And you used him. Okay. So what if I open up the conversation now that Lala's questioning everything about Ariana and her relationship with Daniel, which we'll get to soon um, on her podcast when she had Heather McDonald. What if I feel bad for Randall? I feel like you just went after him because he had money. And is he a scammer and a horrible person? Sure. But maybe he really loved you and he felt like he had to do all those things and buy all those things. I'm just playing devil's advocate here. I'm just being devil's advocate. I feel like you used him, BJ's for PJ's. You blatantly told us all there are other dicks you can suck to get on a PJ. So you don't need him. And he kept taking away his Gucci slides. But I'm just being devil's advocate. I just want, I just want you to understand where he might be coming from. OK, he might be coming from a place where he's always felt really bad about himself because he couldn't even find his neck. So he never thought he could find love. You know, if you can't find your neck, you probably don't think you're going to be able to find love. I mean, that's right under your head. So I, I don't know. I'm just I'm just being devil's advocate. I'm just I just want to be devil's advocate that maybe, you know, he was a beautiful girl like you and a woman. And, and he, you wanted all these things like put me in this movie. Give me a Range Rover. Pay my rent, daddy. And then you would go to, you told us this, Lala, you guys would go to hotels and Randall, you would put on a wig or something. You would be up in a hotel room and then you would do some kind of Harvey Weinstein role play where you'd be like, oh, whose D do I have to ask for this part in this movie? And he would be like the producer who then you, you know, had to do sexual favors for in order to get roles, which is ironic considering when Jennifer Lawrence, uh, a couple of years back was on watch what happens live and called you a see you next Tuesday. You then came out and said that she seemed like the type of woman who, um, would do Harvey Weinstein for her career when really I'm just being devil's advocate. You were the only one that was kind of doing that. Ah, I know. I know. I don't listen. I love you. You're great. Cause this is what she's doing to Ariana. You're so great, babe. You're so right. You're amazing. Okay. But like, devil's advocate, he's probably upset because, you know, he can't be friends with the same people and be around you after he hurt you so badly. But it's like, but babe, you're like not reacting wonderfully. So I'm just being devil's advocate about, about Randall. Maybe Randall has always been just so insecure. Maybe he had a bad childhood, maybe because he always allegedly looked like that. You know, he just thought I'm never going to have it. So he had to always fake his life, his lifestyle, his money, everything, because people only wanted to be around him when he had money and influence. Because I'm just being devil's advocate. But would you have dated him if he was exactly looked exactly like he was, had that same voice and love for pickleball, but had no money, no BJs for PJs, no Gucci slides, no Range Rover after the first night you guys had sex, no ability to be the producer on movies to get you in the, to those movies. I'm just I'm just being devil's advocate. I'm just doing it. I'm just, I, I don't, I love you, babe. Babe, you're great. You're great, babe. You're so great, babe. But I just, I need you. I don't know. I don't know. That's how ridiculous this shit sounds. I don't see how she doesn't see that. Thank you, Chickenhead PK Neely, live. Yes, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate you. Um, and Toby coming in with the super chat. Thank you, Toby, for the super sticker. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, we know. Beow, 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 beow. Uh, we need a blowhorn on, uh, we need that sound effect for sure. All that. What'd you do today? <laughs> Get your nails done? He would love for me to be run away out of this group and out of this town and out of him having to answer for his own actions. He would love that. He would love nothing more. I want to find out what a big old <laughs> bitch I am. <laughs> we got Maya together and I named her and Maya and I have had such a very special relationship and we would cuddle in the morning. 
We played hide and seek, played all kinds of games. And uh, I love Mayo. So just, I don't know. I mean, because she paid for the. You guys, I can't. I can't. I love Maya. God, oh, I love Maya. We would just play all kinds of games. Oh, and she was just great. Oh, and I loved her. And we would play like hide and go seek. I mean, was it consensual? Because all we know from you, Tom, is that you like to do things that aren't necessarily consensual. Like, you know, record Rachel Raquel's um, fingering session on the FaceTime. So I don't know if could Maya run away? Were you squeezing her too tight? I don't think Maya was playing hide and seek. I think she was just hiding from you. She didn't want to be sought. She didn't want to be seeked, Tom. Okay. I mean, how creepy is this guy? This guy is so creepy. How how are you not embarrassed that this is who you're going to bat for the season? This is the one you're like, I think I want his friendship. The dog doesn't even like him. That dog couldn't get to New York fast enough. That dog got its own plane ticket. Maya was on Delta.com going, I I'll sit on the bottom of the plane. Just get me out of this house. This guy don't wash his drawers. He's a liar. He's dirty. He blames women. Please, 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 please get me out of here. So stop it, Sandy Butt. Stop it. Thank you, Jill Christine, for the super ch uh, chat. And thank you, Jay, for the super sticker. Appreciate you. And Leslie Vaughn coming in with a super sticker. Thank you so much. But how cringe is this that he's like, we do so much to get, we don't feel bad for you. You didn't take care of that dog. Okay. When your other dog was passing away, unfortunately, and very sick, what'd you do? You were banging Rachel Raquel behind Ariana's back while she was grieving your dog. You don't give a shit about them dogs. You just, like James said, you just, you're pretending. You're pretending. We don't buy it, Tom. You're not a good actor. Rachel Raquel told us you're not good, baby. I paid the bills for the house for the past, <laughs> you know, nine months. Do I own the house now? That'd be cool. I don't know what is adoption fee, like 300 three, four, three, four $400. I just think Sandoval needs to learn how to shut the up about the bills, about who did what, who said what. It just... Maybe I can get Sandoval to pay my Verizon bill because it just told me when I was screen recording that it's coming out of my account. 210 bucks, bro. Can you pay that for me? Thank you. Then you can technically own my phone, I guess. No, not really. But um, yeah, this whole thing with the house thing and he's like, I, I'm paying the bills. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, first of all, you're a liar. We don't believe liars. Um, you So far, you haven't been honest with us. So everything you say, we're just like, poo poo. See you later. Don't really care. Um, and also, what does that have to do with anything that's going on now? That doesn't mean you would get to keep the house. This is a business. Like, you entered into a business buying this house with Ariana. And now you have to do it. And uh, you have to uh, settle this in a uh, actual business way. It's just not like, oh, I play for the bills. Uh, I got Ann to change the paper towel roll. Uh, it's my house. Uh. We can't believe you because you're a liar. You're a liar. Yes, Tom, you pay your adult bills. Congratulations. Congra and how creepy. It, it's it's kind of creepy that you would have a significant other and you're like, we got to go half seas. Bro, if you got it, pay it. If you're in love and you got it, you pay it. For me and my husband, I'm not going to go, I'm not, not going to pay the uh, mortgage unless you pay exactly half. What are you talking about? We're our relationship. Like we're together. If he pays, it's me pays. If me pays, it's he's pays. Like, what are you talking about? These are adult times, adult bills. What are, what is this? Your roommate? Like you literally were tre treating her like your roommate and cheating on her. Like she was just your roommate as well. So ridiculous. It doesn't matter. You hurt her in more ways than one. She didn't pay her electric bill last month. Who cares? I miss her. I miss her a lot. Miss like running around with her, playing with her. That's rich considering you tried to murder her. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Things between. And this is why when Schwartz tries to pretend to be like the good guy, and I'm just so sweet. You make jokes like that, dude. But you don't have like you haven't earned the right to make jokes like that with your behavior and how you've acted on the show, how you've acted to Katie, how you've acted to Ariana. Like th those jokes, you're not on a level like that. That was a very serious thing for Ariana to almost lose her dog because of Tom's negligence, because Tom was such a, you know, irresponsible asshole who just leaves the doors open and then uh, unlocked 
I believe her bedroom door to get in there and then shut the dog in there. You shut Maya in a room. It's a dog. That's your dog. If that's your baby and your fur baby, you best believe I am not just closing my dog in a room for hours on end. Like not even talking about it not being dog proof, but I'm not just going to lock them without food, water, a chance to go potty in a room. Why would I do that when I'm home? And if you do have someone there working on the air conditioner, why don't you take Maya outside? Why don't you play with her? Why don't you cuddle her? Why don't you take her for a walk? Why don't you have Ann take her for a walk? For your locking room, Ariana's room, it seems sus. And it seems like something he was doing in order to piss her off because Tom doesn't seem to have the capacity to care for anyone else but Tom. And I only know this because that's what you've shown us, Tom. So, I mean, I don't know. Like I said, uh, like we've talked about, a lot of us here are uh, fur baby parents. I, I wouldn't do that to my cat and I wouldn't do that to my dogs, especially my cat would probably love it. Um, but I wouldn't do that to my dogs. Like Buffy's right here sleeping on the rug. I mean, I, it's that's, that's insane to me. That's insane to me. And then Chell is here. So, you know, Teddy can roam around and hang out with Chell. I mean, this is ridiculous. All right. Now we got another after show clip to react to you guys. It just is. We're going to talk about the Katie and Max hookup and these men, they are so fragile and they're such hypocrites on the show. They really are because after everything they've done to these women year after year, after year, cheat after cheat, after cheat, wiener with someone else, wiener with someone else in a baby door, in a baby door that wasn't their girlfriend, wasn't their wife. Um, they have the nerve Jack's Sandy, butt. And Schwartz have the nerve to get up here and have an opinion about this. Not only that, but you're going to hear Tom Sandoval basically say, I mean, I would be pissed if like my friend, if you Schwartz hooked up with Ariana. Oh, so then you can understand James's sentiment when you hooked up with his ex fiance on the low and had a whole torrid affair with her. But for some reason, you couldn't understand why you would have to give James an apology. But he's going to, it's like, but that's what you did. How, how can you think that you shouldn't think what Max did is weird. They shouldn't. I think um, it's weird. I don't, I'm not really a fan of Max, but these guys, that that's what you did, Tom. That's what you did to your friend. You hooked up with his ex. It's like, <laughs> what? It, what is not computing? <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Okay. Let me, uh, I'm just like, oh my God. And they're like, allow, how, how can anyone defend this man? He's a, a walking contradiction, hypocritical asshat. <laughs> All right, let's listen. Schwartz, you confronted Katie about hooking up with your best friend, Max. It was weird. It was weird. Yeah, it weird. was funny, though, too. And I found it funny. What? What do you want to know? So... What do you want to know? Max? Tom? By the way, I'm not mad. If that would have happened <laughs> two weeks after our divorce, I wouldn't have been mad. I'm sorry. I would have been nine, a little more disturbed. Nine guys out of ten? I would like, I would not feel right okay about no, that was a, that was I'm sorry nine guys out of ten you being that one would not regardless if i dated the girl three years ago two years ago one year ago there would be a little bit of like but, we, but, but we i said, guess in our group does it, it doesn't really apply <laughs> we're, we're so desensitized in our group, it doesn't really apply because i'm sitting here you're not supposed to do that well i mean well, I, we have, i've done that i would feel really weird if you hooked up with ariana well dude oh, and i would feel weird hooking up with katie like i would never I, maybe it's misrepresentation to say i didn't care um First of all, you would love to hook up with Katie. We saw your ass when you're like, you look good, Katie. How many times did Sandoval tell Katie she looked good while she was verbally destroying him? You look good, Katie. Yes, yeah, she knows. She knows she looks good. You know who doesn't look good? You. It's a really bad look. Your behavior, your attitude, everything. She ain't interested. But you, that's why you don't like her because you know she don't want to have sex with you. That's how these men operate. They show us. They get very angry. Men like this. Oh, my God. So transparent. It's like they hate the women who are outspoken and don't want to bang them. They're like, well, then you you serve no purpose in my life because that's how they feel about women. Unless you're fuckable or you can be their friend and, uh, you know, take up for them and placate them. They don't have they don't have any business for you. Then they want to paint you as a villain. So uh, please stop. And with this, with Tom saying, oh, my God, Tom, Sandy, but literally saying it's weird. It's weird. It's weird. That's exactly what you did, dum dum. Only it was a million times worse. <laughs> a million times worse than what Max did. 
All right. I mean, if Max is really Schwartz's friend, yeah, that's a shitty thing to do to Schwartz. It's not shitty for Katie. Katie doesn't own that man. Nothing. We talked about it yesterday. I hope Katie fucks everybody Tom Schwartz knows. I hope Tom Schwartz just talks to a guy and Katie's like, come here. Come here, fella. You know what I mean? If that makes her happy, mazel. Do it, girl. I hope she does. But the rest of them, why are we even asking these pigs what they think? They've all pigged out. They've all been in the playpen with their wieners. Why do we care what they think? Oh, my goodness. Artist, thank you for the super chat. Artist says, late, but I'm here. Now, hello. Watch uh, watch my godchildren today at their house. So I'm late, but I'm here. Oh, that sounds so fun. Hope you're having a wonderful evening, Jillian. I hope you and your godchildren are having a wonderful evening um, as well. Okay, let's keep listening to these idiots. Yes, Steven. Choo-choo. Choo-choo. Choo-choo-choo-choo. And I think I saw HC in the chat say something like they tried to, yeah, the Toms act like they caught Katie in a gotcha moment. Utter failure. It's a failure. It's not a gotcha. It's a she got some moment. It's not a gotcha. It's a she got some. She got some from Max. And it sounds like a lot of the ladies have gotten some from Max. So Max's, Max's wiener is pretty popular. Even Lisa Vanderpump said uh, she kind of understands. So I just was like caught off guard. It was more of a WTF moment. But there was no anger or resentment towards Max or Katie. Zero. But it had to acknowledge the, the hypocrisy because, you know, she really did like scorched earth my life after that kiss in Mexico. It's like just like burned it down, our whole friendship, uh, whatever was left of it. Max is literally my best friend. And you f***ed him. And you roasted me into oblivion after I kissed Raquel. And she was barely in the friend group. I'm trying on the Schwartz like pants and walking a mile in it. Well, don't, don't put this on me. <laughs> Wouldn't that have been lovely if we could have both kept that uh, little nice boundary rule for one another? But Tom took a giant on that and basically said, I don't give a f about you or respecting you or this friendship that we're trying to build and just made out with Rachel and basically said he's doing it on purpose. Was Max a revenge bang after you found out that he had kissed Sheena? Well, maybe it's tit for tat. No, I mean, that was really divine timing though. <laughs> after a revenge bang, no one goes around the town screaming, that was revenge. No one does it, okay? It's like uns unspoken, okay? So it happened. So let's just leave it at that, right? No one needs to say if it was a revenge bang. Of course it was. I don't think so at all. I think Katie was horny, Max was I think single. Katie had a thing for him for a while. Yeah. It was just that night, coincidentally, it happened. But I think it was inevitable. Honestly, I saw the way they both looked at each other, and I knew it was like Sexual almost like that forbidden flirtation. fruit, where it was like yeah. they each had to take a bite. Well, and if you had already done it more than once, and I had already done it more than once, she was like, "Can't be bad, right?" Well, and she's heard the feedback, so yeah, it, yeah, yes. There was the Schwartz and Raquel kiss, and it was like, "Well, you kept it in the friend group, so so can I." I'm sure that was maybe a little part in the back of her head, but ultimately, I think she was attracted to him. He was attracted to her, and they finally just had to get it out of their system. I stuff my shoes. I'm gonna take a baseball bat to your car. <laughs> <laughs> What's better? What's better? That or the baseball bat to your car? Well, there's a lot of scuffs on those shoes. Yes. I don't judge Katie for that at all. Look, even if it was a revenge bang, good honor. Do you know what I mean? Like, Schwartz did make out with Raquel, and it was like right in front of everyone. If I was Katie, I'd be pissed too. And knowing Katie's personality, you know, she's very, you know, she's yeah. kind of badass, a little fiery. She's gonna be pissed, you know? <laughs> she's gonna be pissed. But then, but then, but then she would have banged Max. I mean, hey, it's cutthroat. That's legendary moves. Yeah. Like, everyone stop downgrading it. Savage. Woo! <laughs> Let's go, Katie. I love Katie. James is like, I love Katie. I love Katie. Yeah, it's a savage move. Um, and it's wonderful. And yes, as uh, I think Linda said in the chat, um, Tom saying, oh, Schwartz saying, oh, Raquel was barely in the friend group. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Try, yeah, with your revisionist history, with your gaslighting, keep trying to convince us that. We know that that is not, in fact, true, but you're trying to downplay uh, that. And uh, there's just, there's no reason that Katie should feel bad about having sex with Max other than, I mean, I think he's a douche, but listen, maybe he's got a good douche dick. I don't know. That's her business. All right. And it has nothing to do with Schwartz. And when Schwartz says, oh, I was, I was just like, what the fuck? I was, I was kind of taken aback by it. Yeah. I'm sure Katie was taken aback too. When she found out that her husband was still out there getting drunk and making out with people. I'm sure Katie was taken aback when she found out that years before you and Sheena, you were trying to make out with Sheena in Vegas. And so I, Katie's been taken aback by a lot of things and also taken aback that you would publicly try to humiliate her with Rachel Raquel, knowing that Tom Sandoval was having an affair with Rachel Raquel.
because you two Toms, you will never convince me otherwise. You two were working. You were working to uh, put salt in Ariana and Katie's game. You were working on pushing propaganda that they were evil and horrible and working to get them off the show so you could replace them with Raquel and Joe, two women that believed uh, your bullshit at the time and two women that were a little easier to you know, control. So um, nobody feels bad for you. Nobody cares if you were thrown off. I'm glad you were, honestly. I... <laughs> I'm glad that you were uh, because you need a taste of your own medicine. Uh, you really do. And Linda P says, how many best friends do these people have? Too many. I, I don't even, I said yesterday, you know, Sheena's following 56 people's locations. I do not like 56 people. I guarantee you I cannot name 56 people I like, okay? Um, let alone have this big of like a best friend group. That's, it's weird. It's weird. It's strange. It doesn't make sense to me. Okay. Uh, Joanne Hendricks, thank you so much for the super chat. Joanne says, I so need a dose of Jolene. Thank you for being awesome. Can you say Lala once more for me? A little Joe hat would be a cherry on top. We go, well, Lala. Well, if Lala is going to have sex with all these people, then I'm going to have sex with Tom. I don't have a hat, but I'll make sure I have a hat next live so we can do just a little, a little Joe. It's like, oh my God, you guys, she is selling hats now. Joe Wenberg is selling her Joe hats. I hope she gets a lot of sales. You know, hopefully no one bullies her hats because we'll hear about it allegedly. And, uh, you know, she, she says, like, you guys, hey, it's me, Joe. I just, uh, I just, I'm selling a hat. I know that's so weird. It's so random. I like, you know, most girls don't wear hats, but I do because I'm like, not like a regular girl. I <laughs> go Packers, you know. So, um, yeah, what adult man says best friends. <laughs> uh, zesty, zesty, thank you for the super chat. Says a Barack, more like a bonk. He needs a hefty chiseling. What is chiseling as we say in Australia? Oh, I like this. I don't even know what that means. I'll have to Google that. Uh, hefty, hefty chiseling. Well, let's talk Brock for a second, you guys. Why? I think I have a picture here. Why is Brock wearing a blouse, a see-through blouse with a tank, a fitted tank underneath? <laughs> and why, why is he wearing patent leather heels? What's, what's going on? Don't, don't I have a picture of this man? Let me see if I can transfer one over to myself. Brock's outfit. Oh, my God. What is what is happening, Brock? You cannot have all these misogynist takes this season and then show up like this. You you Again, you're appropriating our style, our culture, women. You can't do that, Brock. It's weird. You know? Clothes, for the most part, I think, you know, do whatever you want, you know. But what in the Harry Styles do you think you're doing? Because you can't have these horrible takes about what's going on on the show and not stick up for the women uh, against these misogynists and then wear the shit. It's it's not working for you. No, no. I think he's really trying to Harry Styles it, and it is is looking bad. What is this? What are you doing, Brock? Yeah, you're channeling Prince, but you're not Prince. Yeah, you better you better get working um, to be Prince. First of all, you got to get a full time job, allegedly. And uh, Prince was real big on charity work and he didn't tell nobody. He did it on the low because he was just doing it to help people. So philanthropy and a job a job you got to get. But I don't know what is going on with those uh, uh, those witch boots. OK. Is he is he on next season of Coven? I don't. He is. He's gonna cast a spell. He's like, I put a spell on you because you mine. Yeah. Samantha says, uh, Brock desperately wants to be the number one number one guy in the group. That ain't happening. Like ever. Like ever. Forever. Ever. Forever. Ever. No. It's it's not happening. What's happening? Is there trouble in paradise? Put, give Sheena her shoes back. This is not right. Okay. Now. Anyone else could probably pull this off. You can't. That is Sheena's blouse. That is Sheena's tank. Those are Sheena's pants. And that's a Sheena shoe. This is just, this ain't right. This does, is no. No, 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 no. Let me say, give that shit back to your wife, 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 wife. Because it looks ridiculous. No, you can't do the androgynous thing. It's not working. It's not working for you, Brock. Not with these horrid takes. Is he in like a band we don't know about? Hey, Teddy. Back Even Teddy came out to be like, that ain't right. That ain't right. 
Uh uh. <laughs> and so Sheena is better. Yeah, this was in the back of her closet. This is like shit she got for free. I do not. It's something. This is like women's wear on our way to work, you know, in the back of Cole's yellow blousey blouse. Mm -mm. I put a spell on you. He's trying to be the witch as a wee ho. He's trying to bring that shit back. No, 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 no. Let me see. That looks so fucking dumb. Let me say no, 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 no. But you think, yeah, 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 yeah. Tell me, Australians, this is not what's popping down under, right? There's no way. Sir, you look ridiculous. Very, you look like a Sanderson sister. All right. You need to come back at Halloween. It is. What's, what is it? It's April. April Fool's. Was this on April Fool's? Was this an April Fool's joke? Oh, God. Care says, hey, Jolene, Katie talked about Max in her podcast this week. Oh, I'll have to give it a listen. Is, do you think maybe, yeah, it's a humiliation ritual. It's just give it, I'm down the ditty hole, you know, of all of that going on. And I feel like he's headed to a P. Diddy party in this. It just, this isn't, this isn't what we asked for. No, but you can't even be like, you know, what you ask, wish versus what you ask for, or Timu. It's like even Timu would do better than this. You know, these are, <laughs> he says these are his orgy clothes. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's like, I got me, Sheena, I'm wearing these boots out, and they got heels, and you got to deal with it. Yes, because I was in orgy. Okay, but it was, it was two, yes, yes, there were two dicks, okay? But they were also to vaginas, okay? So sometimes, you know, when that happens, it just happens. And there was a koala, and there was a boomerang, and there were Fosters, Australian for beer. We drank way too many Fosters. We went to the Outback Steakhouse, and we ended up in an orgy. The shit happens, okay? You know, then P. Diddy, so I was like, oh my God, it's P. Diddy, you know, down under, P. Diddy is a big deal. And we was like, P. Diddy, what you doing? And he was like, come to my party. And then we allegedly went to some party. And I can't tell you the rest that happened because we signed an NDA, okay? But it might be in Rodney James' lawsuit, allegedly, all right? Say, is it? Is it? Brock. Oh, Brock. Seriously. All right. I think we have time to get through one more little clip, and then I have to take off, but I'll be back tomorrow morning, you guys, maybe even later on tonight, most likely tomorrow morning, um, to talk more about who have more Diddy updates. I mean, we got, you know, P. Diddy's sons hired uh, El Chapo's lawyer. Also, I think like Gotti's lawyer. So lots of updates in uh, uh, the Diddy case we need to talk about. But, um, you know, I got to I got to get to dinner with our friends and my husband. So um, let's take this to the Lala thing I wanted to show you guys. And then tomorrow we can talk more about um, the attempted dog murderer after show clip and then the other after show clip. And let me tell you, if you're watching the Valley, I'll be recapping the Valley tomorrow. Okay. And uh, Jason from the Valley, big lady boner for him, especially his hot takes on the after show. Jason from the Valley and Janet from the Valley they get it. They get it. Now, I don't know if Janet did or did not say Michelle might be a Republican racist. We'll get to that tomorrow. But Jason and Janet on the Valley were like, oh, no. They were like, we don't care if we're friends with Tom Sandoval. That is some trash ass behavior. All right. Um, oh, I will. He turned the big 4 -0. -oh. So we're doing a birthday week. Okay. So Lala, Lala. F Lala. Lala says, so she had Heather McDonald. Her and Heather McDonald are good buds. And, uh, you know, she'll go on Heather's podcast or go on Juicy Scoop. And then Heather is very gracious and goes on whatever Lala's podcast is called. Give them Lala. Give them Lala and her brother and her mom and her assistant. Lala's, I don't know what it's called anymore. I really don't know what her podcast is called. I know it's, I wouldn't listen to it if she wasn't on this show and causing trouble. Uh, I know that I listened to it during the Rachel Raquel for her take on that. And I listen to it occasionally now because it's like such bad takes, but she has Heather McDonald on. Okay. And Heather is doing her damnedest. This is just a segment to explain to her why she's just not getting it and why Ariana might be you know, feeling this way and Ariana's trauma and Lala is just like, no, 
nobody cared about my trauma. So I don't care about anybody else's trauma because this is called recovery and this is called um, growth. And I'm being soft. Well, you're not being very soft to Ariana, the victim of these time crimes, but okay. All right. Uh, let me know if you guys can't hear it. Let's hit play. That get why the cast is like, um, the friends and everybody are like, but you're doing fine. Like you've made all this money. You've got the lemonade is like flowing, mm -hmm. but at the same time, yeah, she got all these opportunities and she took them and that's great. But that doesn't mean that she should get over this any quicker. And that if I'm just paying devil's advocate, cause I, I see what you're saying on the show and I get it. But at the same time, it's like, when I've had stuff like that happen with me, people are like, well, why are you still harping on this thing that this person did to you that was so awful? You are doing great. You know, your show didn't suffer. You are gone every weekend killing it. Like, why do you, why can't you just let it go? And I don't think anyone's wanting her to let it go. You're allowed. I get it. You're allowed to not let it go and go insane on him. Got it. The problem I'm having here is you're using all of these words that I very much feel. I can literally sit here and have empathy because I've felt those same things. The difference here is you choose to stay in the house and everyone can say he should have left. I agree, but we now know who Tom Sandoval is. Tom Sandoval is the guy that, that has sex with your best friend in your home while you're you know, mourning the death of your grandmother. He's shown. So let's not sit here and be like, I can't believe he wouldn't move out. He's shown who he is. So now we have to take control of the things we can control, which are ourselves. If he's making you feel this way and you're staying in the house, I got questions. If he makes you lose your mind like this and you are traumatized by what he has. Okay. You got questions. Are you going to have these same questions when people are in DV situations and they can't leave the house for reasons because either they can't afford to get another house? Um, they, you know, there's lots of reasons why people who are either being, you know, emotionally abused or physically abused or in a bad relationship, why they don't leave right away. I mean, is, is this what we're doing now? Is this, is this what? It's 2024. That's what we're doing. You went from boom, boom, boom. You are so dangerous. You're a narcissist. You're just like Randall to now like, okay, well, if you don't leave him and if you don't show me what I think is the way that you should be dealing with this, then clearly you're not dealing with anything. Is that what we're doing? Oh, la, la. Is that really what we're doing, Lala? We're really going to just be like questioning women who you know, you yourself had, have admitted that she is in an awful situation, an abusive situation, and you have said Tom Sandoval is dangerous. You said that. I didn't say it. I'm not the one that said that. Lisa didn't say it. You said it. You told us. You kept telling us. You doubled down on it. And now you're just like, no, no, no. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, now you're just like, well, you, you should leave the home. That's easy for you to say you were kicked out. Because when you lived with Rand, he owned the home. Well, someone else probably owned the home because <laughs> Rand allegedly not good with the money and scammy, scammy, getting it from all these different places, you know. Uh, so, but really, uh, you had to leave because you, you, you weren't on the mortgage. Ariana's on the mortgage. This is an investment of hers. Why should this asshole? What's she supposed to do? You should be, as a girlfriend, you should be saying, Tom should leave. Tom should leave. You all should be getting together, standing in front of the house, doing some kind of like Red Rover, Red Rover, send Tom Sandoval right over. And he's got a fucking breakthrough, you guys, because you have an ovarian circle of trust, a uterine circle of trust around the home to protect your friend Ariana, who you say is with a dangerous, scary man to get him the fuck out of there. This is a horseshit, horrible take. And I am like ashamed for you. I'm cringing for you. I think this is yuck. I think you haven't evolved. I just, I want to hide. I don't like it. It's gross. It's sick. Ugh. It's done. I want to know how you can move on to a new boyfriend in 10 days. I'm genuinely wondering this. Because when someone's using the same words that I'm using and I feel for you, I want you to shed knowledge on how you can stay in the same house and get a boyfriend in 10 days. How do you compartmentalize? I don't understand it. Okay, well, those are all good points. But 
I think the same argument goes when people are like, why didn't you tell about your abuser? Like, mm -hmm. why didn't you go? Why did you stay married? Why did you? It's like, I don't really think we can ever figure out why someone does or doesn't do what they did. She found the other boyfriend in 10 days because it felt great. And she liked having that. She didn't want to move on in the house because she's like, fuck it. Why should I be inconvenienced? Let him fucking suffer. Maybe she's not even bothered by him. Maybe she's like, I'm glad that he's bothered by me. I, you know, we don't really like, it was a pretty big deal. And the other thing is being that it's public, even if she's having a great day and she just got a deal with the battery company and, you know, she's happy. It's like she could still open something on her phone and be reminded of the humiliation. Of course. And how did you not know? And you're dumb. And how did you not see it? And you deserve it because you didn't have sex with him. Of course. And all of that. So then, then that can set her back. Like maybe she's doing great. And then that sets her back. And then the cameras are up the next day. And that's when she snaps at the beach, you know, like. Right. Mm. And I understand. I fully understand. But we're talking about a man, Tom Sandoval, who season nine ha ha was screaming or season, whatever season we brought on these random people, season eight, losing his God. I have to address that. You're a random person. I know you're talking. I didn't like season eight either. Max, the trainer guy, um, the other lady that got fired, and then Dana, who's still a friend with the group. But you were random. You weren't a part of the original cast. All of a sudden, they were like, hey, here's our new hostess. You're random. You were random, too. What are you talking about, random people? Like, she puts herself on this pedestal. It's like, girl, you are believing your own hype. You need to knock it. The ego. The ego. The ego. And as addicts, we need to make sure the ego is in check. Okay. Cause I mean, be, you know, feel yourself, but when you got to knock down other people, girl, there's a lot to unpack there and I don't have the time right now, but holy shit, these, these randoms, she's like, okay. And Heather McDonald is just dropping knowledge, like straight knowledge, knowledge that women over 40, you just get, you just get, I don't know why Tom Sandoval as a woman over 40. No, he wishes he could be a woman over 40. No, as a man over 50 doesn't get that, but we just get it. So just listen to Heather. Heather's dropping it going, here's the deal. And Lala's like, okay, okay, okay. But, but she's Sandovaling. So maybe Sandoval has been right all along. The narcissist is recognizing another narcissist. Yes. Humility, just a little humility would be nice. It would be nice. And now she's going to tell us, she's going to rewrite history. Like we didn't watch the damn show. And our, uh, Lala's going to tell us that Ariana never stuck up for any of the women when Sandoval went after them, which we know is a damn lie. And Ariana, in fact, did uh, go toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with her own boyfriend many times over him getting in, in fights with the women. And Ariana was someone who, um, you know, she didn't always, uh, they're, they've all had bad takes on the show, but for her to just blatantly disregard any of the times that Ariana stuck up for them or had her back or the other women's back and just make a, a statement that is just so full of lies and say she never stuck up for us when he went after me or Katie. Uh, ma'am, ma'am, we watched the show. We were there. Were you there? Were you there? Or were you doing BJ's for PJ's? Were you trying to get your Gucci slides back? What were you doing? I just, I'm uh, the fact that this chick has did done this huge 180. It just seems so stupid for what? For what? We brought on these random people, season eight, losing his goddamn mind on everybody. And Ariana's sitting across from me saying, the thing I love about, that's what I love about Tom Sandoval. And I said that he, he yells at women. Wait, goes, when, no, wait, he, when was he, what women was he yelling he at? He has consistently been unkind to me. He's okay. consistently been unkind yeah, I've seen, to Katie. Okay. And who has never come to anyone's defense? Ariana Maddox. Not once. She falls. That's a lie. And why don't you hold the guy that's consistently been an asshole to you? Uh, why is the woman who dated him, why is she being held more accountable than the asshole? Do you see the internalized misogyny? Are you just, what's not computing here? You literally are holding Ariana to a higher standard than the dude that was a fucking asshole to you. What's wrong with you? This, this kind of thing pisses me off so bad and it should piss every woman off. I mean, I don't want you guys to be pissed off. I want you to be happy and have a good day and laugh and stuff. But it freaking pisses me off because it's, it's this kind of mentality that's like she knew he was and he 
are you serious right now? But you want to, but this is the guy you want to befriend. This is the guy you want to be devil's advocate for. The, the guy that you say just was so rude to you. The men that called you bootleg housewives. And now Ariana's held to this higher standard. You realize you are just giving in to this misogynistic take that somehow women need to, well, you know, men are men, but women, you know, we need to hold them to a higher standard because they know better. And that is just so unfair and it's so untrue. And it's just such a detriment to just the human brain and thinking and society in general. And it's also ex the exact opposite of what you said last season and what you said at the reunion and what you said months before this season started filming. It's just so, it's so gross, Lala. It is so gross. And I really hope you see this and I hope you just wake up. And if this is some kind of you selling out to be on the value of your own show, is it worth it? <laughs> is it worth it? Let me work it. Um, but seriously, is it worth it, Miss it, Missy Elliott? Is it worth it to like sell your soul this dirty? This is dirty. I get it's a reality show, but this is dirty shit. And this is, we can never trust you again. Because you told us one thing and you act another way. And we thought you had grown because you told us you had grown. Now you drink Perrier. You're on a sobriety journey, which I love, by the way, as a fellow sober chick. Great job there. But are you practicing this stuff? Are you practicing what you preach? Come on. Melissa, thank you so much for the super chat. Melissa says, the Gucci slide references have me dead. But for real, like that's so that seems so ridiculous to me. Lavender Girl says, Lala is rage baiting. She has even admitted she loves getting fans riled up. That's what she she wants you to believe. I'm just I'm just trolling. Lala has no idea who she is. She has no idea what she's doing. And this is all going to blow up in her face, unfortunately. And we all wanted to cheer for you. That Tyra Banks moment. So you can pretend that you're trolling. You're getting fans riled up. But you care. You're invested. And you want us to like you. And you want to take the positions of the people who are um, more liked on the show. So I understand that that's what she's going to say. But those people that say things like that are the exact people that give all the shits and are so affected by our opinion of them. But just the message, the overall message she's putting out into the world as like a mother of a daughter, if you want to bring it there, if you want to hold Ariana to this high standard, well, the message you're putting out as a mother to a daughter about female friendships and women in general and supporting women, not good. It's not good. It's not. Yeah, she's not going to be okay if, because when when she's well liked on the show, she is. You can tell, she kind of lives and dies by that, you know. So if she's if if her, um, I know Andy's really pushing for her. So we could, you know, people still could buy it and be like, no, Lala's just, she just doesn't want to deal with Ariana's bullshit or something. You know, you could have those people because Andy's like, this is Lala's best season, and they're really pushing her forward, but. We who know what she's doing, we know what she's doing. So she can try to pretend that she doesn't care and she's just trolling. She cares, I would say, as much as Sheena cares. Like, she cares. She'll say, Sheena cares so much. Bitch, you care. You care. Thank you, Rones, for the super chat. All right, let's get through this clip. Pulls back. Let's it happen. And now suddenly, because you're on the receiving end of his misogynistic ways, you're looking for backup. I, again, there's I can, only one I, way to look at it. No, but I can totally relate to that too, because, you know, you know, a personal thing I went through mm -hmm. with a friend and I saw him do this to other women. And I was like, well, there's two sides of the story. Right. He's not doing it to me. He's a delight to me. It can't. And once it happened to me and other people in my life were like, la, 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 I don't think it happened. I don't know the story. I don't care. I'm going to just go on because he's pleasant to me. And then now, and now, em, like, exponentialize that by, like, sex and marriage, you know, relationship. So all your points are right. But at the same time, like, she was the girlfriend. She, she look, she did the bad stuff, too. She... Cheated on with him when he was with Kristen Doty. She liked it very much being in that passenger seat. But so what can't happen here is when my life went to shit, I was grilled by Lisa Vanderpump. I was grilled by my cast members. Not right. one person said, you know what? Let's ease up on law. She probably should have known, but she didn't. There's a baby involved. I'm asking the questions that I think a lot of the audience would want to know, right? Bottom line, we're filming a television show. It's an ensemble cast. 
And I understand that it can be uncomfortable. But if my ex were a part of Vanderpump Rules, I would have to have uncomfortable conversations with him. It's just the name of the game. I, I actually had prepared myself season 10 for them to bring my ex into the mix. While you were still together or after? While we, when we had broken up, I was fully prepared. You are just thinking worst case scenario. They're going to bring him on. I had a conversation with production. I said, two things are going to happen. You bring him back, I walk. Or you bring him back and you cut not a word that I say. Because I'm mentioning it all. Well, they can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> This looks so ridiculous, Lala. You're not even buying this. Like, there, it's Heather McDonald's like, uh huh. Okay. Yeah. You can just tell Heather's been in this business long enough, whether you like Heather, or you don't like Heather. Uh, she's like, mm, okay, this, you're kind of burying yourself with this, but I guess I'm going to let you. Uh, you're still my friend. <laughs> uh, Lucy says, Lala is half a Sheena type girl and half an Ariana type girl. She's mad at her own personality and taking it out on Ariana because she recognizes what she dislikes about herself. Yes. Beautifully. Uh, are you a therapist? Because, uh, yeah. Uh, Anna says, uh, Lala talks in circles. I do not understand it. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah. Ariana stole her. Bitch stole my storyline. That is what it is. It comes down to simple jealousy. Like it just, it just does. It just does. She's like, she's reach, reach, reaching. And it's gross. And the more I hear from Lala when she's questioning how she could meet Daniel, just keep questioning Sandoval how he could carry on a seven month to one year to two year. Who the hell knows now with the time frame affair with Rachel Raquel behind Ariana's back? That's the only question. We don't care if she met Daniel 10 days later. Okay. Because then you're opening up the door for us to question you. So again, we got a devil's advocate. Okay. I'm just playing devil's advocate here. But um, I don't understand. I'm just going to say it. Why you would be attracted to Randall. Uh huh? Other than just for money. Uh, and then if that was the case, which clearly it was, um, just devil's advocate here. Uh, why do you want us to be invested as an audience in a relationship that was simply transactional and was always going to end? Because you're going to get old and he's going to get broke. Ah, I'm just devil's advocate because that's how those relationships work. When, you know, a young starlet or wannabe starlet gets with an old grosser man who has money, uh, one of two things are going to happen and they're always inevitable. He's going to go broke or you're going to get old. No matter what, you're going to get old and he's going to dump you because it's a transactional relationship. You are giving him youth and beauty. He's giving you money and this idea of power that you really obviously don't have because look at what's happened now. So, I mean, I'm just devil's advocating. I'm just devil's advocating here. So why would we invest in a relationship that's not based on reality. It's just that typical, stereotypical LA relationship, which is, you know, the young, beautiful girl uh, or woman decides to date the troll under the bridge because he has money and a PJ. But I'm just asking questions. Like, I don't understand that because that's not how I roll. But I mean, that's so I don't get it. So you have to now explain that all to us. You have to explain that all. Do you want to do that? So you are in no position to question Ariana meeting Daniel or what she's doing on her journey. Okay. Otherwise we're going to have a lot of questions about your journey and you're not going to like the questions, you know, it's just, Oh my God. Oh my God. Um, yeah, she's, I mean, she's just contradicting herself like crazy. It is just, Oh, Oh God. Oh, uh, Vic star says Lala cried about how much Randall loved her. Not how she loved him. She was sad the money was gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She'd still be there if there was money, in my opinion. I'm devil's advocate. I'm just saying, you know, uh, what if Randall felt so insecure and sad that he felt like he had to do anything to keep the money to keep you? I'm just saying. I'm just I'm just devil's advocating. I don't. I love you. You're great, babe. Babe, you're killing it. You're so amazing. I love it. I love all your opportunities. But just devil's advocate. What if Randall felt inferior, you know, so it, it, it drove him, continued him down a really bad path of just making you know, horrible decisions that are borderline, if not criminal. All right. Yeah. Uh, JD says kick rocks law. This Lala, it's not fun. You're not a fun person right now. This isn't fun. I don't like this. I don't know how we got here other than jealousy. And you're like, bitch, stole my storyline. So there you have it, you guys. I have to get going. Um, I'll be back tomorrow. Thank you guys for joining me live in the chat. Thank you for all your comments. I'm sorry I did not get to all of them. Please comment after the video post. So I like reading through your comments and I want to hear what you guys have to say, even if you don't agree with me. Um, because I just I like this little like community discourse we have 
have going on here. Uh, shout out to my super chatters today, Joanne Hendricks. Thank you for becoming a member of my channel. Evelyn, thank you. Linda, David, Chickenhead, PK Neely, Toby8842, JM, Jill Christine, Leslie Vaughn, Artist Fleetwood, Joanne Hendricks coming in with a super chat, Zesty Zesty, Care Bear, Michelle Turcutt, uh, A Rones, and Alex Lee. Thank you so much. I don't think I saw that until right now. So thank you so much, Alex. Appreciate you guys. You're amazing. You're wonderful. Stay away from Randall. Stay away from people who are acting like Lala is. And like I always say, enjoy yourself. It's a little later than you think. Also, share me with your friends and we can hit 40,000 subscribers soon. Bye. If you like what you see